The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live in studio, waiting to take your calls on anything you'd like to talk about, as long as it's your health. And it doesn't involve my directing you to drugs and surgery. This is the place for you to call, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. What a lousy day it is outside. It's wet. It's kind of drizzly and depressing and so it's good for you to stay inside turn the radio on tell your friends that we're on and we're going to talk about things that will make you feel better we're going to make you feel happier because why we're going to talk about your brain actually and that's the topic of our in-house continuing education program this wednesday evening september the 12th 7 p.m at the roselle center in fairfax and who is going to present it none other than dr scott lamp dr scott yeah, what's up with your brain? <laughs> <laughs> it is Sunday and it's wet outside. Yep. And as you long said as that I'm, word depressed. I yeah, heard. I, I know, up. I know, I know. That's you know, it's and it's the start of the NFL season, and you know, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about actually. Yeah, there could be more depression there too. There's going to be a lot of depression, <laughs> particularly when they get hit in the head. You know, exactly. You know, t- uh, Scott, listen, this is a, a very important subject. You know, we're, we've talked about brain. All kinds of things. And, you know, guys are coming back from overseas and people suffer tragedy in their life and they end up with this thing called PTSD. Mm-hmm. Uh, people end up with uh, dementia. They, can't, they they don't remember. You know, th- we see progressive uh, onsets of all kinds of diseases that seem to have relationship to what the brain is doing. And I know this uh, this topic is not only one that we could spend just this program and the in-house continuing education program, but we could sit here literally and dedicate probably – Two months of programs to yeah, this there's and not so, cover the, the topic. There's so many branches off from this that cause problems to the brain that don't realize. Um, and I think it's um, it's something that it has to be addressed in multiple multiple ways. And I think all parts of our, when we work with people in the office, kind of touch in all our departments. Um, there's definitely um, a lot of different things that we apply to helping helping people out and um, we look at this as something that's, you know, what's up with my head and am I slowly losing it? And we all will eventually all lose some of our neurons in our heads. But the question is, is the good news is you can actually increase the branches in your brain. You can actually make things work a little bit better. And I think that's some of the things that we want to talk about and touch on is the positives instead of all the negatives. Cause True. And, you know, Dr. Scott, here's, here's the thing. You said, you know, we're all going to get less functional, less optimal. But, yeah. however... That flies in the face of new research out there that says right. that the brain, the brain cells, which at one point we thought that once they're gone, they're gone, they're destroyed, they don't right. come back again. And research is saying the opposite is true, that the brain actually can duplicate itself and replicate its function and cells can be reformed. Right. And I think that's a, that's a, it's a, an, it's an interesting element. What we're talking about as we get more and more in science, we can start seeing some more of these things. So... We're talking about brain chemistry, and when we're talking mm-hmm. about chemistry, we're talking about things, if we want to put the tags on them for the brain, we're talking about things like neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, uh, things that communicate from one cellular level to the other. Hormones and oxygen and sugar handling and all those kind of things. One of the two things, the basic premise, and I think we're also doing this course that, uh, that we're doing on Wednesday, is two different elements. One is you got to stimulate the brain, and two, you have to have proper environment. And we go from there. And I think you break this out. You have to stimulate the brain appropriately. And then also you have to have the proper environment, which means things like inflammation has to be controlled. Sugar has to be controlled. Um, hormone aspects have to be controlled. What is my past history with even autoimmune diseases? All these things can play a part in regards to what's happening to, to our brain and then maintaining uh, maximum health. You know, for our, for our listeners, we, we let's set the stage for this. When we're talking about the brain and all the pieces of things that affect the brain, your neurochemical Mm -hmm. platform. Basically, what we're talking about is everything that controls everything within the body. Right, exactly. And there's so many interconnections. 
there's there's nothing that is independent of the brain and the nervous system, and it all starts in that mainframe in that computer sitting between six inches of your earlobes, that has a profound effect. But here's the thing: your your topic this Wednesday evening is brain chemistry and right. the effect that it has on virtually everything in the body. Right. So we touched a little bit about you know the brain chemistry and so forth, but the truth of it is is that there's two interconnecting systems that feed on each other. One without the other is insufficient. And we're talking about the brain and its effect on everything, but we're talking about where all this chemical input is coming from, and then we have to go lower, we have to go the intestinal tract. Right, and it's the gut. And the gut is huge. And that's why we have the, have the uh, we talk about um, the access between the brain and the gut itself. And a lot of times, where do we get our neurotransmitters in the first place? And understanding what a neurotransmitter is is just a chemical that goes between two neuron synapses. That actually a synapse is just kind of a kind of like a, a break area where things cross over a bridge, goes from one point to another point, and communicate information. But those are made. A lot of them are made in the gut. And if the gut's not healthy, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have some additional nothing's problems. Nothing's working. Yeah. You know, you look at the end product of people who have been in injurious types of situations, and we can point the finger at. Sports figures, from boxers mm-hmm. to football players to lacrosse players to uh, soccer players and so forth, and people just banging their heads on stuff. And right. you know, we look at people who have been in car accidents, and they say, "Well, you know, I only got hit at 15 miles an hour." Well, that 15 mile an hour shakes the brain. Right. You know, a good friend of ours, Dr. Evan Mladenoff out of Kansas City, is doing a new program. It's called "If You Shake It, You Break It," right. and basically talking about what happens with any kind of abrupt irritation. Uh, f- from any source whatsoever as it affects brain and brain function. In this situation, we're talking about brain chemistry. Yeah, and I think, you know, on the physical aspect of, like, we always talk about structure, chemistry, emotion, uh, the physical element, this, the brain's the, the consistency of tofu. You know, it doesn't have a lot of mass to it. It needs to be protected. It's in this fluid in our brain called cerebral spinal fluid. It kind of helps work as kind of like a pillow, so to, sp- so to speak. But all this banging and hitting and points kind of cause all kinds of massive irritation to the system. So we got physical, you got chemical, you got emotional. We don't even got into stress yet. You know, when we look at the brain, we're talking about multiple layers of interreactions. You know, we have mm-hmm. this the big piece up at the the top, we have a middle piece and then we have a lower brainstem area. Right. And all of these guys have very specific uh control mechanisms. They have uh, actions and reactions within the system. And they all have dependency on very specific brain chemistries, if you will, right, these things right. that we talked about. And they're, they're, some of them are automatic. They keep us alive. Mm-hmm. In the lower portion of the brain stem, you know, or, or our reptilian brain, right. that's, those are the automatic feedback loops that allow people to stay uh, on the planet. Yeah, you know? I think, I mean, like, you have things like in parts and parts also what's going to physically being abused or sometimes what's being chemically be abused. Um, you know, we, I've talked the part of the brain, the Judge Judy, that's between our temples. Uh, the one you were just mentioning up before, that, that uh, part of the, the frontal lobe type element of the body that gives us kind of like our behavior, motivations, our goals and those kind of things uh, and how that gets interrupted and changed. Um, but again, chemically, there's certain things that that need certain more points of certain types of neurotransmitters versus other parts of the body needs other ter- transmitters. And they have certain kinds of signs and symptoms that have in each some of those sections, which we'll kind of delve into a little bit when on the class. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. My guest in studio, your host this Wednesday evening at the Result Center for Healing, Dr. Scott Lamp. He's going to be talking about brain chemistry and the basically the effect of all those things that go on in your brain on your health. We're not just talking about pain patterns, but health. Dr. Scott, let's talk about that just a little bit. We, you know, you, you coined this whole presentation, uh, brain chemistry's effect on health, body's ability to mm. be well, be present, be strong. What, is, what does that really mean? What, how, does, how does the brain, you know, we talk about immune function, but what does the brain have to do with that? <laughs> Everything. I mean, that's a wide open question. Um, I know. I just it's like, it's like a, so I don't know where, where to go to. I mean, I'm hitting to all fields here. Um, it, the brain's involved, I and mean, it's connected with everything in regards to certain types of elements. It's um, again, we're working with 
uh, visual components. We're working with motor, fine motor control. We're talking about um, activating things that um, give us a, awareness or spatial awareness and how we are in space. All these are coordinated by this this computer uh, amazing piece of material that's in our in our skulls, which are, we're still fascinating and still mystified by. That comes up. Um, we know that this brain takes about 30% of our oxygen supply because it needs that to be able to run. It takes a huge amount of of uh, sugar and elements to, to make sure things work well, and that means the proper amount of sugar and sugar in balance. Um, you know, if you, it's it's an amazing element in peace, and it controls everything. Everything's associated with this peace, and it's like when we talk about even when somebody might be thinking about something with um, in regards to there's certain tr- neurotransmitters and certain problems that go along, even when you have things like uh, numb feet and hands. It's uh, the nerves themselves can be affected and also some biochemistry that's in there that has a price with that, the digestive aspect. If you have, for example, an un like an ongoing gastrointestinal problem that can't be taken care of, it's probably a brain problem. You know, we talk about that friend of mine, that lung nerve, that wanderer, the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve, yeah. And, yeah. You know, the 10th cranial goes yeah. all the way down, and but the impact to the brain can affect the vagus co- uh, core, the nucleus, if you will. Right, right. And subsequently, everything else all the way through. Yeah, and everything it touches, and it touches a lot of things as it goes all the way down through the system. You know, the interesting uh, piece is that there's all of these relay centers in the brain, and we don't realize how sensitive they are to direct and indirect stimulation. Right. You know, these the, the effect of brain chemistry, if you will, the production of the needs that it has. I think one of the things you might think about is like sometimes in the, if the balance is not there, if the inflammation is there, these things that are there, hormone imbalances and uh, inflammation, not getting the proper food and not getting the complex actions, these, these areas that you talk about can be very touchy. They, they talk about something called like a threshold. It's like when you just barely touch them and they go, they go tickling and they can't, they can't stand it. And they, they get, they get uh, very, very easily ticket, ticklish or tickled. Um, but one of those things could be tinnitus when somebody has ringing in the ear. Um, if the body is under stress and is just at threshold, just ready to fire, but not quite, but any chemical irritant or some other things can get that to fire. And all of a sudden I got ringing in the ears and I don't know where they came from. And it could be a lot of different sources that do that. You know, it's funny, when when a patient comes in and they come in and they complain of pain, one of the questions that I, I lead with is I'll start asking them about, you know, when they move their head, do they have whatever symptom? Does it make it worse? You right. know, when they breathe, when they, when they cough, when they sneeze, because that's going to increase pressure within the skull. Right. Does that pain pattern, does that lack of function, that malfunction become more prevalent, more obvious, more uh, fulminating, if you will? And it's funny that how many people say yes, but they don't know why. And then you start digging deeper into small things that have happened. And you start asking them questions about their intestinal tract. You start asking them questions about how they put their hands on their face. Do they hold their breath when they sneeze? Do they bear down and hold their breath uh, when they're on the the porcelain throne? That kind of stuff can affect the brain. And everything that goes on. We're talking changes, about, yeah. yeah absolutely. absolutely. We're talking about your brain chemistry and how it affects your health and wellness and things that just don't go away. My guest in studio, Dr. Scott Lamp, your host, your presenter, this Wednesday evening at the Results Center for Healing in Fairfax. Coming up to a break, don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live in studio, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. That's how you find us here in studio. This Wednesday evening, we're doing a very special program at the Rizal Center, and it's the effect of brain chemistry on your health. Isn't that interesting? You know, we, we think about our immune system, we think about our, our vitality, our health, our wellness, but we forget that it's all controlled by this computer that sits between our ears and housed and protected by the, the bones of the skull. And we kind of, you know, until we get a direct blow or trauma, we kind of forget about it. But yeah, this Wednesday night, it's going to be you, Dr. Scott. You're you, going to you present You know what's it. interesting? You just said it. What organ system has a complete uh, protection, a bony structure around it? That'd be it. It'd be the brain. 
be the brain and then spinal cord and the, the protrusions that come off of it. So what's the most important? Everything else is kind of well, everything is, everything's added along with it. But I think what's one of the things that's extremely important. You, you cut off the head, you take care of the rest of the system. It just doesn't work. You know, seriously, <laughs> seriously, when we're talking about you know the brain, we're talking about everything that has control over everything else. Right. And the the brain is one of those things that science only now today is starting to begin to begin to, to tickle into the threshold of what it's capable of doing. You know, we get older and our brains don't work the way they're supposed to. We're reaching, we're, fu- or we're struggling for words and so forth. But those are the structural, chemical, emotional stresses. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, talk about just recent changes. I think it's been fairly recent when they found out that there was lymphatics. I mean, we always theorized there were lymphatics, the drainage system for, for the body in the brain. And they didn't have it. I think it was a review article in 2009. There's no lymphatics for the brain. Yes. And I think University of Virginia turned around and said, uh-uh-uh, we found something. I think it was in 2014. We do have it. Yes. And it's like, wait a minute. This is 2014. We I mean, we haven't discovered everything about the brain yet? Well, the, the, the whole piece was, you know, based on the, the idea that a lot of these degenerative diseases of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's right. and ALS and uh, neurocognitive uh, uh, dysfunction was a result of the brain not being able to get rid of all the lymphatic waste right. you know, that it produced. Right. So now we know that it's able to do that. So then it correlates if it can get rid of it. Are there things that are building it up at a higher level that it can't get rid of? So, right. Dr. Scott, when we're talking about we're, when we're talking about the the brain and its effect on on health, on wellness, hmm. why do we have to? Why do we isolate that when we we know that there are trillions of other cells within the body that we have to protect and and feed properly and try to get rid of the waste systems and so forth? Why the brain? Well, I think it's you know it's our control system. I mean, this is our master our master computer. That's the thing that makes everything else go. go. And I think it's a coordinating of events that plays a part. That's why it's so important with this to, to be able to work with. The problem being is, is that there's so many different avenues that kind of affect things and affect the body in such a negative way. And there's, there's a lot of things you can do to affect it in a positive way. But it just interconnects with so many different elements that we've got to make sure that it is running healthy. If you don't have something to connect all the parts together... And things start running and running on their own. It becomes a problem. We need to have a coordinator. This is the manager of the body. This manages our th- our, our things and put them all into proper place, and get the logistics correctly. So this brain, if you will, is is being exposed. It's susceptible to virtually everything around it. Right. And it's uh, we the the body has its protection. The skull that we talked about. But in fact, it's not enough. And we have to look at it from other dimensions as well. What are the things that affect the brain and how is this brain of ours affecting wellness? You know, we've we've begun to develop uh, an attitude, if you will, that everything is compartmentalized in the body. Mm. And that's traditional science, that's traditional allopathic uh, health care. But the truth of it is, this is the beginning of systems care. This is the beginning of functional capacity of the entire body. Mm. That brain, that computer has a profound effect on everything, and everything has to register and be coordinated by and connected to that brain and its tentacles, if yeah, you will. Yeah, again, just going back, it's a, it's, it's a manager. you got to be able to have everything to manage. If you don't have management, you have chaos. And this is one of the things that help work with that and kind of control those elements. But we got to protect that, and there's different ways we can go about doing that. Does the brain produce its own chemistry, or does it depend on everything else around it to produce that chemistry? Combination. I think it's a, there's a lot of other things that do. I mean, you need to get oxygen into the system. It doesn't create oxygen by itself. You've got to get oxygen in. Um, you need to f- feed the body. We need to have fuel for that body. But there is some neurotransmitters that are made in the brain, but there's other neurotransmitters that are made in the, in the digestive tract. So it's a combination. I mean, it's, all these things have to work. This is harmony and balance is where you're looking to. You know, one of the interesting things that we see with patients, and I know you see it as often as I do, that a patient comes in, they've had a history of... Uh, gastrointestinal problems. They've had mm-hmm. gastric surgery. They've had bypasses. They've been put on protein pump inhibitors and so forth. And one of the direct symptoms that we see is neurocognitive dysfunction. Right. And it's a feedback loop and it destroys our health broad-based. Yeah, and you're going to take a look at it because it has a great effect on neurotransmitters and those kind of elements. Let alone if something causes an inflammatory reaction, 
you place inflammation and things that can eventually start having an effect on, on the body in regards to if I have something that starts creating problems with the, even the, inte- the uh, integrity of the wall of my digestive tract, if that starts to leak, you can almost guarantee that you're probably going to have a, a leak in the brain, blood-brain barrier. So now i got materials coming from my stomach going into the brain that are not supposed to be there, that are toxins, and you can add all those to it. So you really got to look strongly. You know, The immune system is supposed to be 60 to 90%, depending on who you read, is on the digestive tract. But that's going to have a direct effect right back. It's, there's, a, there's a relationship directly to the brain. You know, the interesting thing, we see a lot of neurostructural dysfunction and chronic pain patterns. And here's a situation that if the brain isn't taken into consideration, it never goes away. We're coming up to a break. Mm-hmm. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. My guest in studio, Dr. Scott Lamp, he's going to be talking about brain chemistry on your health. Don't go away. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Yes, we're in studio, even on this rainy, ugly Washington day. However, it's sunshine in the studio, as always. 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. My guest in studio, your host this Wednesday evening at the Rosell Center for Heal- Healing, the 12th of September, that's, gosh, this year is going by 7 p.m., Dr. Scott Lamp will present a very interesting and provocative and one that may put a light onto something for you on brain chemistry and its effect on your health and your wellness and what you can do about it, and you may not even know why problems are being irritated. Before I do that, I want to go to the, to the phone lines. Anne, how can I help you? Thank you for being patient. Oh, yes. Um, I have a neighbor whose husband has had uh, tumors removed in his brain. And at this point, he's in his 80s, and at this point he is hallucinating. And it's you can't seem to reason with him. Um, she had me come over because he thought people were in the house. And I tried to reassure him that no one was there. Well, and the, that type of hallucinogenic pattern can be very common to post-trauma. Uh, it can be a result of a tumor pressing on something. It can be a result of injury due to the surgery itself or even drugs or follow-up. So it's very difficult just on the information that, that yeah, you've like given. It's area of the brain, too. It's a couple different things that could be play a part in that. The, I mean, the, the one I, th- the, I'm trying to reach out for her to find, you know, is, is there some help that she could seek to deal with it? There are things that can be done to reorganize and retrain the brain, if you will. And it's a combination of things with acupuncture and low-energy light laser and very gentle cranial uh, technique, meaning manipulation of the, of the bones of the skull, because often when they, when they do any kind of surgical intervention, the 22 bones of the skull get locked, and they build up spinal pressure. And when the spinal pressure builds up, they can cause any of these things that we're talking about compounded with the medications. So, yes, there's things that can be done, but we'd have to know a, a whole lot more than that. What I would suggest is you know, having a conversation with, uh, with Dr. Scott and, you know, offline, we get as much data as we can. Yeah, we, we need to have some detailed information in regards to seeing exactly how some of those, those pan out. I mean, like I said, Tom said a couple of things there that were beneficial, some things that will actually affect some neurotransmitters that might be affected by, again, the medication, again, by the tumor removal. There's just some things there that uh, you have to get some really deep insight on that. The brain is plastic, and that's the thing that we have to remember uh, and is that the brain, meaning the brain is moldable. It can be re-educated. Uh, there's this concept called a holographic brain. And what that means is that every tissue, every cell in the brain has the memory of every other tissue, every other cell. And it has to be re-stimulated in, a, in an exact way to bring up memory control and so forth. And you have, to, you have to understand why these things are coming about. So it's not a simple do this. It's understanding where the tumors were, what the intervention was uh, before that, what other systems now are being affected, and trying to rebalance and and, uh, control that. So, Anne, uh, what I would suggest is tell your friend to call Dr. Lamp. He'll be more than happy to take the Mm -hmm. time and and go through and and, uh, speak with them. Uh, But the short answer is there's always something that can be done. How much depends on how much damage, physical damage, there actually is right now. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. 
this Wednesday evening, Dr. Scott's going to be presenting uh, a whole program on brain chemistry and how it affects your body, and more importantly, the things that have caused it and triggered it, but what you can do to reverse it. I uh, want to add a little uh, kind of uh, a heads up on right. uh, Dr. Tom Rizal Live as well, because next week, we're in football season. That's and, right. And, you know, everybody's getting their heads knocked around, but they're also knocking us around as well. So mm-hmm. uh, next week's program, Dr. Tom Rizal Live, will be on Saturday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 p.m., because we're being bumped for the Redskins. So instead of listening to us at 12 noon on the Eastern Seaboard, you're going to be listening to us at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday next week. We have, uh, I think there's seven programs, Dr. Scott, that are going to be that way. We'll try to give you a heads up. If you go to Roselle Care, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E, RoselleCare.com, and you go down and you check out our radio program, and it'll show you all the dates that have been shifted. But that starts next week, and it's going to be off again, on again, off again, on again, depending on the week. That's pretty much any of the, the games that are early. Any of the early games. If they're home, so if they're home right. and they're at 1 o'clock, we're going to be on Saturday. Okay. So that's how it works. If, if Redskins are playing at home and they're at 1 o'clock, we will be broadcasting live on Saturday at 4 o'clock. I think I got that right. Yeah, I didn't ask anybody else. Okay. But anyway, this Wednesday evening, the 12th, you're going to be presenting the program on brain chemistry. Uh, let's talk about what happens. Why? Why, do, why does, you know, what are the triggering mechanisms? You know, you, people say, well, I've, I've never had an injury to my head. I've never had this. But all of a sudden, I find myself in these states where my health isn't good. I'm totally wiped out. I'm, you know, I, my adrenal system, my fight flight system is crashing. I can't mm-hmm. digest foods the way it's supposed to. My heart is beating out of my chest. Every one of those symptoms I just talked about and so many, many more have to do with the brain's capacity to work properly. Right. Where do I start? <laughs> I knew where you would Okay. Okay. So um, let's take a look at this. So dietary elements are extremely important. And I think one of the things that there's a lot of things that we do, inflammatory elements will have and directly relate, relate to the gut, will directly relate to the brain. Um, you have those kind of elements there. Um, do you have, are you feeding the body enough things like essential fatty acids? Those are important parts. They're anti, um, they kind of fight inflammation in the body. The body's, the brain's mostly made of, uh, 60% fat anyway. We're going to be able to do things to kind of help support those. Um, so our habits that we're looking at, the chemicals, the toxins, the lack of oxygen, um, autoimmune or other having effect would be an autoimmune from some other place. You can actually have a tendency to actually increase autoimmunity possibilities somewhere else in the body. Like, for example, I think the number one autoimmune, if I correct me right, uh, Tom or not, Hashimoto's thyroid, um, has yep, a good tendency absolutely. to also blend in. If the body has a problem dealing with that particular area of autoimmunity, it might also very much have a problem with autoimmunity to the brain. Um, when you have a concussion, when you get hit by a concussion, you can generate an autoimmunity to the brain tissue itself, which is actually kind of a frightening type thing sometimes for certain people. And the brain starts eating itself. It, yeah, it goes after itself. Uh, it, there's something called a white blood cell called a microglial cell, and it actually goes up and cleans things up, but it's overly uh, reactive to actually go after tissue. And I kind of look at it as like a, um, a chihuahua with a bazooka. Um, if that gets if that gets started in the brain, it's very hard to shut it off, um, and it does a lot of damage when it's when it's in that place. So there's certain things that calm that down. There's certain nutrition elements, and we'll talk a little bit of that in the talk um, that kind of help with those type of things. But multiple things, uh, you know, the thing is, is again, the brain needs proper stimulation. It needs oxygen. You need to exercise. You need to get out, and people aren't exercising. We're getting caught in that digital dementia now that we have, and that's another thing. Digital dementia. There's we're doing so many things through electronics that, number one, doesn't get us out to go move and get oxygen moving throughout the rest of the body. The other thing is, is that, and I had this on coming in on the way into the work. I was looking at my car. I'm like, okay, what was the name of the, oh, it's on, it's on the display board. I already know that the singer of the song is and what the song is. I'm not using my brain. Something's given it to me. That's right. Everything's going to be given to me. And I think for kids, especially when they're growing and they're developing their brains, they're not getting the recall set- setter that's coming up. So, again, it's we got to look at our proper environment that we're in and how those factors are, play in a part to make us do better. You know, even even on a, a very limited scale, years ago, I used to pride myself that I could do math very rapidly in my head. Yeah. And I would sit there. I Somebody asked me a question. I would take out a pencil or a pen. We're out for dinner, and I'd take a napkin, and I'd start writing things and drawing figures and putting numbers down in my brain. Right. And today, it's like 
I reach for my, my smartphone. And that has taken away from that capacity to be able to train that at a much higher level. It's, it's a problem. You know, there was an interesting article. And I laugh all the time because I am a very, very multitasker. Mm-hmm. And I can do a lot of different things at one time. And with now with, with electronics, I can do even more. It's good news and bad news. The good news is that multitasking, I can get a whole lot of things done probably f- much faster than and much more m- more efficiently than most people can because I've been doing it since I was a kid. That has a lot to do with my ADD. Mm-hmm. But the bad news is if I don't give myself a break and shut down and listen to music and get away and reprogram the other side of my brain, I actually become dumber right. and less effective and less capable. So, it, again, it comes back to an element of environment and balance. Everything in kind of a balance element. How much are you going to put in? And then you can call you can call that actually some stress. You're putting stress on the system on the body and needs to have some type of break system. It needs to relax. And the same thing if people who get sleep. The brain actually inflames more if you don't get enough sleep. It actually cleans itself, shrinks a little bit. When you haven't enough sleep, you get into that delta D sleep. You get that deep sleep. If you don't get it, that doesn't happen. So inflammation stays around. So so many different factors play a part with how we're doing with things, how we're eating, how we're exposed, how we're thinking. Are we going out? Are we not going out doing things? Are we sleeping at all? Are we not sleeping at all? Um, what kind of stresses we're putting on? You know, we never give our chance to have a break. You know, have a, like a, a time. You know, I tell some, especially, um, uh, I love the women that, that they come in and see us. A lot of them are like, you ask, ask them on a stress basis, you know, make a list of 10 things that are important to you. And they never put themselves on the list. And it's like, you know, you need yeah, well, to take an be, hour. You should to, be first. Yeah, you should be first. You should take an hour, at least an hour, two hours, a couple hours, at, uh, and sometime during the week. That's your time. You could shut off, close off, or you got to do something. And we're not doing that. And, again, it goes back, I think, to the efficiency that we have of our new equipments that we have and all these th- technologies. But now everything has to be faster or quicker. And if you're not producing that, especially in employment, if you're in a business situation, the next guy's going to pass you by. Absolutely. You know, in, you know, when we talk about retraining the body, retraining the brain, we talk about the right hemisphere, the left hemisphere. We talk yeah. about they have distinct functions. You know, the the left side is your detailed, is your verbal. Uh, it's the it's the one that is the business guy putting words to the pictures and things of that nature. That's right. The other side is the picture maker. It's it's yeah. the the musician, but without right. words. Right. And you know, we have a patient in the office, and I know you've seen this person, and had a had a stroke uh, a paralysis of one side and i uh, saw the patient in the hallway and being treated by a doctor and doing really really well coming out mm-hmm. as faster than anybody ever thought they were going to do and i said let me check something really really quickly dareth you know uh, right. uh, introduced me to the to the couple and i checked him uh, just 2 seconds in the hallway and i had him hum and i had him i had him uh, count and on humming uh, he weakened. So I had him hum happy birthday, right? And mm-hmm. the muscle right. that, muscles that I tested inhibited fully. So I said, what I want you to do at this point on, every opportunity you get, listen to music and I want you to hum. Mm-hmm. No words, just hum. And just doing that all by itself dramatically enhanced the capacity of the patient to function and is, is, is resolving a lot more of the impairment that they had. So when you look at the brain at that level, you have to find out, okay, what pieces can I exercise, can I do better that will allow things to become more compatible to each other? Find your weakness, work on your weakness, then work in combination with other things. Um, there's a couple of different things. I remember there's a documentary about Alzheimer's patients that actually they were, they were doing a course. They couldn't remember their names, but they can sing a song. So it's actually using left and right brains and going a different way to get to that point. It's kind of an interesting aspect as you see some of these things that happen. How about somebody who sometimes if they have problems working out um, after a stroke or they have lost their balance, but if they're singing or music's playing, all of a sudden they can get that balance. You're going in a different pathway to get to that brain and then reform it, be a little bit more plastic, as you will. There's a really good, and I can't, I wish I could quote that, and I don't have it up on the the screen right now, but there was a particular incidence where somebody actually had where a a sensory organ, the vestibular organ of the ear, was blown blown up. I think it was an explosion of some sort, if I can remember, remember right. They couldn't stand. They couldn't get balance. They couldn't get information. It was totally destroyed. Um, and they could, they were about to commit suicide because they couldn't, uh, you know, li- how can you go with life if you can't get up and walk around? You know, they just couldn't stand upright. So there's a neurologist that actually did some stimulation of the tongue, trying to use the sensory the aspect of the tongue to help to delta or movement. 
So when she moved forward, she stimulated the tongue in a certain way, and she moved backward a certain way. And she was able, with this machine stimulating her tongue, to actually get up and walk around. And that's a great, uh, and I'm fully aware of that study, and yeah. that's a great way of also getting Parkinson's patients to be able to have a much steadier gait and, not, and get rid of the tremor. Right. And so it was an interesting thing. But the, the other thing is, it's learned. Because what happened when they first did this on the person, they, they found after they take the apparatus off the tongue, it lasted for about three or four minutes afterwards. And yeah. then what happened is, is after they stimulated longer, it lasted longer to the point where they didn't need it anymore. It was a total compensation. I mean, it was months and months and months for maybe years that actually happened, but she was able to get rid of the device, which to me is just amazing how the body is able to, to compensate that way. Although it's been you know around us for a long time, we've been suspicious of it and so forth, but the brain truly is the new frontier. You know, just as a kind of an antidote to that when my daughter was young i think it was like fifth grade when fourth or fifth grade when the kids mm-hmm. started learning uh, uh, states and uh, uh capitals right mm-hmm. and aaron could not memorize and it was two three nights of tears and we couldn't figure it out but this little girl would listen to a music theme of some sort she would be able to repeat it immediately after hearing it one time and we sue said I'm going to fix this. And what she did was that she put the states and capitals to a rap. Mm-hmm. And Erin Le- learned it 15 minutes, and she's never forgotten them to today. Right. You have to go where the patient is, where the person is. You have to be able to blend their strategies and support them. And suddenly you see things not only in learning capacities be able to be refined, but conditions, uh, pain patterns that never yeah. go away now go away. Visual, hearing, all kinds of different types of learning. It's incredible. Right. It's absolutely amazing. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. My guest in studio, Dr. Scott Lamp, your host, your presenter, this Wednesday, the 12th of the month, 7 p.m. at the Rizal Center for Healing. Going to be talking about brain chemistry and its effect on your health. We'll be right back. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rizal here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live, as you normally will do on Sundays at 12 noon on the Eastern Seaboard. But next week, guess what happens? The Redskins are in town at 1 o'clock. It is NFL again. And so when they are in town, we are on Saturdays at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So mark your calendars. Next Sunday, the Redskins play home, and Dr. Tom Rizal plays at 4 o'clock on Saturday. So kind of gets confusing. Yep. But my guest next week, Scott, will be the boss. I mean, Sue will be online with me. So, there you go. So we will put be, you in your place. I know. So I have to be very gentle, very kind, and very easy, and otherwise I can't go home. Remember, balance in life. I, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, uh, this Wednesday evening, the 12th, you're going to be doing an amazing program. And it's one that if you have any problems whatsoever uh, when it comes to understanding why things don't go away, it could very simply be your brain. And if we can figure out that that's what it is, treatment is very specific, very direct. You can make things a whole lot better. Right. And that's the whole triggering mechanism. You know, uh, one of the, the more common irritations is irritation to something called the meninges of the brain. Mm-hmm. And the meninges, they'll get little cyst formations, they get little tumor formations, and they affect, there's actually three layers to the meninges. And there's that hard covering that we call the dura. It's like a heavy saran wrap that protects everything. Tough mother. It's a tough mother. <laughs> and, you know, but if there's pressure on it, and here's how that meninges can be irritated. It can be irritated by a shearing effect, even from blunt trauma, from a mm-hmm. car accident, uh, twisting uh, very rapidly, and it locks the, the, this, this covering of the brain and the spinal cord in a way that it changes the neurochemistry. Mm-hmm. And we see a lot of that. Yeah, I think it's a, it's it's something that um, they call uh, dural torque is uh, is a term that uh, we use in the office, and it's kind of like that's uh, the the it's instead of being in a straight line of of connection, it's it's twisted and turned based on some of the things and the the bumps and and cur- uh, the irritations that we get through through life, uh, even back to the point of even when uh, when a child's born, depending if it's something that's a C-section or a uh, uh, come in the vaginal canal and how the po- child's pulled out. I mean, it comes from all over from that point. So you can change lots of pressure differences on the body. Um, blood pressures can have some changes with this. Um, and then the body's inner reaction with that can have a lot of effects of different chemistries trying to deal with that. Even very gentle seizure patterns. They don't have to be full exactly. blown. They can, they can be uh, little pieces. And any of the hormonal patterns can be affected by uh, yeah. irritation of the meningeal uh, uh, covering, if you will. 
Yeah. Tell us what you're going to do Wednesday night. Well, we're going to actually, uh, at, the, at the class, I think uh, we're going to do a couple things. There's a uh, handout sheet. There's a questionnaire I'm going to give some people to have it. So you have an idea about if they have a particular problem. It's going to give a little bit of ra- rating for each of those areas, like different areas of the brain, and then things like an endurance and memory and all those kind of things. And that's a, something that's a really good, I think you have to take a very good history. And this is the start in the first place to actually see where kind of places you might be having some problems. Um, we'll uh, talk about uh, some of the major elements that play a part with the uh, environmental elements, uh, how to be able to handle some of those environmental elements. Um, we talk about some of the uh, laboratory work that needs to be done to be seen. Um, is there imaging studies that we need to take a look at as, as a possibility? So we'll talk about those things. Um, how the process would go to be able to see to identify some of these things and some possible solutions along the way. That's the important part. How do you get out of the mess? Right. You know, when, when it's there, when you've got chronic problems, you have chronic patterns. How do you get out of the mess? You know, and if you if you don't do anything with your life, if you want to protect your health, your presence, your, your longevity, give yourself the opportunity to, you know, to be present, to, to be quiet, you know, meditate, prayer. Depends on, you know, where you are along that spectrum. You know, give yourself a chance to listen to music quietly and, and you know, you've get got rid to, of the stress. You've got to practice it. You've got to be put it in part of your lifestyle. I think that's going to be a key thing. You've got to practice it. You just don't do it once and say, oh, that's it, I'm done. You've got to practice and work with it. It's important. It's a repetitive process. You know, just because you come to us and you're expecting something to be done and fixed, it's an ongoing, you know, application to the rest of your life. We're coming up to the end of the program. Unfortunately, Dr. Scott, looking forward to this Wednesday evening. We'll see you next week. Love you all. All right. Take care. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Mmm. 